Fans of Dunwoody, we are so glad you are back again for another one of our shows where we bring in famous people from Dunwoody. And today is no different. We are thrilled to introduce you today to Justin Ball with Stage Door. Justin, how are you, man? Great to see you, Mark. Good to see you. Thanks for coming down the street because you're like, what, you're five minutes up oh, the road just, here. Just around the corner, super, yeah. Super close. I want you all to know this is important. Nice shout out. The first place that I met Justin was at Breadwinner Cafe and it's still one of my most favorite. And you did it to me because they have the best cookies in Dunwoody. And I will do. argue with anybody over that. So it is your fault that I added an extra five pounds for the five weeks after we met there. That place is You're awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I am so glad you were here. You are the producer, I gotta get this right, the producing artistic director of Stage Door, which is our favorite Dunwoody Theater group. So glad you do that. What does that mean? Because there's a lot of those words together. Producing, sure. artistic director, what does that really mean you do? So uh, in the nonprofit theater model, there's usually two people at the helm of the organization, an okay. artistic director and then an executive director. Okay. Um, and so I've sort of absorbed both of those positions. Oh, so wow. I, I'm also in charge of fundraising, marketing, development, business uh, partnerships, and then I'm also in charge of the season and uh, hiring all the creative teams. All right. It sounds like you got a lot going on. Quite a bit, quite All a right. bit, especially this month. So thank you, especially this month, right. Thank you for choosing this. Wow, did, did we force you into this day? You're <laughs> no. so busy. No, this All is right. the perfect time. It's the start of our season. Well, it is the start of your season, and this is a special season. Why? Uh, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. Unbelievable. So 50, have you been there for 50 years? Oh, absolutely not. No, <laughs> I haven't been on this earth for 50 years. Oh, okay, um, all right. Uh, no, I have been at Stage Door. It'll be uh, two years in October. Okay, good. So you've been there for two years, but you're still honoring the 50 years. What do you think is notable that Stage Door has done over the last 50 years? Well, I mean, 50 years, we've had so many different chapters in, in, in our history. Yeah. Um, it started by the Dunwoody Women's Club in 1973. Um, starting out in a little room uh, above what was Citizens Bank, um, okay. and uh, it's grown. Uh, in the 1980s, we moved into the building that we're in now. Um, for 15 years, it had a, a great reputation as a, a place to go see uh, Golden Age plays and musicals. Um, and nice. now, since the pandemic, we've really opened up our doors to, to expose a wider audience to the arts, and we're really excited about the new direction. That's really great. So how did Stage Door do through the pandemic? Well, like like most theaters, we struggled. Um, yeah. It was it was the the performing arts took it uh, especially hard, um, and some theaters didn't make it through the pandemic. Um, the Lyric Theater just closed a few months ago. They were around for 47 years. Wow. Um, but you know, we we did a great job in terms of our board recognized that we needed to find other uh, ways to bring in revenue, um, and okay. we started uh, Performing Arts Academy two years ago, um, and it has gone gangbusters. So we, that is is the Performing Arts Academy the summer program. So we have a year-round program in addition okay. to our summer camp. Um, so we offer classes in acting, musical theater, dance, uh, improv, and so we have wow. kids uh, all fall and spring, and then in our summer we have 10 weeks of, of summer camps. That's terrific. So if there is someone in Dunwoody that wanted to do something that's kind of like had that itch, that's always wanted to act, they could come and see you guys and you could get them involved in a program. 100%. We have opportunities for anybody to get involved in theater. Oh, that's terrific. Oh, I love that. All right. so. I want to talk about you. Okay. So it was. It's kind of funny. Uh, Justin's never on this side of the camera or this side of the stage, so to speak. He's always <laughs> always on the other. So we're going to put him under a little bit of pressure here to see if we can get him to choke a little bit. Is that okay? You got it. All right. Your team's going to call. Say yay. <laughs> well, maybe they won't. I don't know. We'll we'll find out. So you are. You've had experience producing, teaching, directing, and in management. And there's this thing that I've always been curious about, and that is. What's the difference between producing and directing? Sure, it's a good question. So uh, in, in the theater world, producers are the people who uh, raise the capital, they secure the rights to, the, to whatever uh, performance you're putting on, um, and typically they'll decide who the creative team is, so they'll pick okay. a director and designers, um, and then the director will take over the project and, and help realize it to, to the space. So they'll, they'll conceive what the, the production should look and feel like, and, and they'll work on the casting, but the, the producer's really the the top dog in terms of securing the money and, and hiring the, the big uh, creatives on the team. Got it. So if I'm a producer and I have a vision of a show of a particular production, do I 
could I get involved with a director and say, I really want this role to be this? Does that ever happen? Sure, it all depends on, on the licensing house. So there are certain restrictions in terms of what you can do with a play or a musical that you get the rights to do. Okay. Um, and so within the legal parameters, then yes, a director could absolutely come on board and, and help tweak it. Interesting. Um, now, as a director, there's, I am always under the impression that the director kind of has an idea of how a role should be uh, presented or, or uh, uh, there's probably a better word for that, but you know, you want that person to be somber or you want them to be really happy, you want them to be silly. Is the director the person that's directly involved with, okay, I need for you to be more of this and less of that? Absolutely. So uh, right now I'm, in, I'm directing uh, our production of Tuesdays with Maury. Um, and so I'm working with those actors to, to craft their performance. They bring, obviously, a ton of talent and impulses and instincts to, to the role, um, but I help shape the performance in terms of where the climax wants to be and, and, and where the, uh, the emotional moments need to slow down. That's interesting. Um, and so I kind of see the director as the person with the, with the paintbrush, right? They're actually trying to, I need a little more blue here, I need more green, but it's, it's how does that person express that? Uh, there on the stage. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I think another metaphor would be um, a conductor. You know, uh, I'm standing in front of a room full of artists and they each bring their own voice and I get to decide when they're louder, when they're quieter, etc. Interesting. Um, I've always thought that um, that we as humans step into every day of our lives as an actor or... Uh, so for the record, everybody's actors say there's no actresses, right? Uh, what's, some, the, what's the politically? I always get confused. I, I use the term actors because it's just all inclusive, but okay. uh, there are some people who still identify as actresses. Okay, I, I'm glad to hear that because I've, <laughs> I've, I've slipped at times. But so, as anybody's an actor each day in their lives, right? They kind of have to figure out I need to be this and this, I need to be that and this. As a performing artist, do you think that they're better in those situations because of their training? Absolutely. So I spent uh, a little over a decade teaching at New York University's uh, Tisch School of the Arts, and most of the students who came through that program didn't necessarily pursue a career in acting. But it has been so fascinating to watch them apply those same skills that they learned in theater training to wildly different fields. Well, that is extremely interesting. So it, whether somebody's going to go into uh, any type of theatrical arts or not, going through this type of training can really help them throughout their lives. Absolutely. I mean, from public speaking to collaboration to problem solving, I mean, theater teaches so many life, uh, lifelong skills. Wow. Oh, I think that's fascinating. I could, I would be able to sit and talk to you for 20 minutes just on that, but we're going to push <laughs> forward. All right, I'm ready. Because we got so many other things that we need to talk about. First of all, you came from New York, you came from the Northeast, you have experience at the Manhattan Theater Club, Playwrights, Horizons, Writers Theater, uh, theater as well as Sharon's Playhouse. There's a difference between New York and Atlanta. So what is your favorite thing about the Southeast? Oh, there's so much to, to, to love about uh, Atlanta and, and this region. I mean, uh, my favorite thing personally is just the access to nature. Um, I love being able wow. to, to, to be outside of the city in five minutes and, and be in a, on, a, on a trail. Um, you certainly don't have that in New York City. Um, right. So that is one of my favorite things. Um, and then the, the cultural arts in Atlanta is, is fantastic. Is There's some really? really lovely theater community here, um, some terrific theaters being made throughout the city, and um, we're really starting to work together to, to collaborate even more. So I'm excited to be a part of this community. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, you know, there's a lot, uh, there's a big influx into the state of Georgia for uh, technology, especially around EVs, electric vehicles. And one of the comments that was made is they can do that because we have more space. Sure. So the space thing, we do have a lot more uh, places to go hiking. I love Atlanta because you can hike in it, just in the city, go for a great hike. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's astounding. All right. So the arts are, you know, what's interesting is we get into life as business people. I say we, right? You know, life happens and we're moms and dads and, and you know, workers here in Dunwoody. What is it about the arts that is, is or should be important to us as business people? So theaters are really unique in that they build a culture around them that is different than most other nonprofits. Um, we are an economic catalyst for this community wow. um, as, a, as a theater. 
Um, when you think about it, we have over 5,000 patrons come through our door, and I would say at least 60% of them are going to a restaurant before they come see our show. They are. Or they're going out for cocktails afterwards. Or when our academy students do a show, they're going and buying all the flowers out of the farmer's market or out of Bloom's. Um, so we are, you know, that's not the case with a lot of other nonprofits. There isn't that culture um, around it. You're not um, buying flowers before you go to the Dunwoody Nature no, Center, for example. Right. So um, we're really proud of the fact that we can be an economic catalyst for our neighbors. It is a very common thing that nobody, and I'm going to say this, there's nobody I know that goes to see a play that doesn't stop off and eat or do something before they go to a show or even after it. I think that's fantastic. Well, we love that about you, uh, especially here at Discover Dunwood. <laughs> so you're celebrating your 50th year. So exciting for that. What's the future of Stage Door? Well, we have uh, so many wonderful programs happening right now. Um, uh, we have our, our traditional main stage season, which hasn't changed. We're doing four incredible uh, plays um, that will uh, appeal to a wide audience here in Dunwoody. Thank you. That's our, <laughs> our brochure there. He brought this in. This is absolutely fantastic. You keep talking. I'm going to peruse. Yeah, please. Um, and we started a spotlight series a year ago that uh, turns the spotlight on local arts organizations. Um, last year, we partnered with Dad's Garage to do six evenings of improv. They all sold out, I think. Uh, we did. We sold those out. And then they're back this year for uh, uh, the Daddening, Dad's 2, uh, we're calling it. The Daddening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and that. then we added uh, Piccadilly Puppets to our Spotlight series. I just happened to get to that page. Perfect. So that is going to be geared towards our three to eight-year-olds in the community. Um, we're doing uh, five Saturday mornings where there's going to be uh, a puppet show followed by a puppet making workshop. Um, just to sort of engage them in the arts at, at a young really age. That's really cool. Yeah. That's brilliant. So that is the kind of thing that is thinking outside the box, right? I like that. And I'm looking at this. There's, uh, in, in, you have September, Imagination Station, Butterfly Ballad in November, January's Wish Tales. I think I want to do that one. And then <laughs> uh, the cow, Cat and Mouse Tales in May, and then wrapping up in July with A Sure Thing. It is a sure thing, a sure thing. <laughs> this is really cool. Oh, thanks. Um, and I, I am gonna, I gotta give a shout out to this one. Tuesdays with Maury, read the book, saw the, saw the movie. Such a heartwarming story. How hard is it to convey something that has so much emotion built up into it? Cause there's, you know, and I really like the thing about Tuesdays with Maury because of the stage of my life. Cause I have elderly parents, uh, and my mother-in-law is at a retirement community. And so looking at going in and seeing someone who's at the, the back end of their life and how Maury lived that um, is really interesting. How do you get that to, how do you get an actor to express that in a meaningful way? That sounds hard. It certainly is. And it, you know, this, this play is challenging because it's two actors on stage the entire time for 90 minutes. Yes. So they're both, uh, the memorization alone is a huge challenge. Um, for Maury in particular, his journey is so difficult because of the toll ALS takes on his body. So him having to, con to portray his physical decline um, oh, over yeah. the 90 minutes um, is a real challenge. Um, but we have two extraordinary actors, uh, Dan Reichardt, who's playing Maury, and uh, John Romanski, who's playing Mitch. Um, they have been uh, Atlanta staples. They perform all over Atlanta, and we are so lucky to have them on our stage. So that's interesting to me. You've got two actors that are coming in that are performing, and they do they kind of run the theater circuit, and whenever there's a, a production they're interested in, they'll go and try out for Exactly. That. So they, we, we hold auditions throughout the year. Um, uh, these two actors have both been on our stage before, so we're, we're, we're really excited to welcome them back. Oh, that's terrific. Well, I'm excited to go see that, because uh, I plan on coming to, to see that show. You guys do so many things. How hard is it to come up with content? I mean, I would think that you probably, you know, we we as marketers here at Discover Dunwoody, you know, we're always trying to figure out how can we tell a new story? How do we find something new? How do you come up with ideas? So it's a real challenge. You know, obviously uh, Dunwoody is, a, is a, a, a wonderfully diverse community, and so one of my challenges uh, as artistic director is to pick a season that appeals to several target audiences. We sure. don't just have one. Yeah. Um, so you know, we uh, a lot of theater goers are the 65 and old, older crowd, and so obviously we want to make sure we have uh, content in there for them, and we do with Tuesdays with Maury, and it's a wonderful life. Um, but we also have a lot of families here in Dunwoody, so we're doing a new puppet musical in the spring, which is the Mad Hatter Pillar, 
and that should be very family friendly. Oh, wait, wait, you said the Mad Hatter Pillar. Correct. Very nice. Did you come up with that name? Or? No, this is a, a lovely play that got its start at um, Synchronicity does a stripped bear festival every year, so it was sort of in its incarnation last year, um, and we opted to do the full length production of it, so it's going to be a world premiere. Um, and our hope is we'll do it uh, in our season 50, and then in season 51, we'll actually tour it to schools throughout Georgia. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. And it sounds like another way to generate some revenue. Absolutely. We're trying to uh, do community engagement as much as possible. So last year, we started the Arts Accessibility Project, and we worked with 300 first and second grade students at Dunway Elementary School. How in the heck do you have time to sit here and talk with us? You are busy. I, I sure am. But <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a labor are. of love. It's a labor of love. And wait a minute. If I remember seeing this somewhere in my notes, you've got kids too. So you're a dad and you're running this robust organization. It's true. But my daughter uh, comes to Stage Door regularly and she sort of acts like she owns the place. So it works out I, pretty well. I, I have three kids of my own. I could see how that could happen. She's probably going to be an actor. Uh, not if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk her out of that. I love that. All right. So um, we talked about all the things that are coming up. This is great. We've gone through so many things. Um, tell me this. Dunwoodians are always interested in enhancing their own community and, and helping things get better. How can we as Dunwoodians help you at Stage Door? So uh, Stage Door has been very fortunate to, to be in the Dunwoody Cultural Arts Building since the, the mid-80s, um, but obviously we're operating out of a 1950s elementary school and that brings a lot of challenges. You know, our scene shop is uh, in the old cafeteria, our costumes are stored in the old walk-in fridge. Right. Um, so, you know, uh, we need an investment in our, our facilities so that we can continue to serve the community in, and, and continue to serve more of the community. Uh, I've gone on a tour. I uh, <laughs> went over there with Justin and walked through and saw how they have, really, you're optimizing the space that you have. Absolutely. Um, but I could certainly see an, uh, a little bit of money would really help enhance those facilities. And, uh, and I would, personally, I'd love to be able to see you get more seats into the theater. Absolutely. Uh, and that would certainly be, be a good thing. And I have no idea how you do that, but it would be, it would be a great thing to see you guys able to expand the number of people you can expose all these great productions to. Absolutely. So uh, maybe we'll help out with that in some way. Uh, we'll definitely give you some push on our socials and talk about all the great things you are doing because you've got to go see this very local, very um, intimate setting where you can go in and, and, and catch one of these shows. And I'm always amazed at how many, I see, I see famous people have done with every time I go in the, into a show. So uh, it, is a, it is a great thing, a great experience. Well, we talked about so many things. I want to make sure everybody can track you guys down. Where can somebody go find more information about you online or buy a ticket? Well, uh, the easiest way is to visit us at uh, www.stagedoortheaterga.org. Um, but we're also located in the Dunwoody Cultural Arts Building right next to Spruill in the Dunwoody Library. And we'd love people to stop in and, and get to know us. Well, I am so thrilled you spent some time with us today. I got to get you back out of here because you've got stuff to do. So, Justin, thanks for coming by thanks, and chatting Mark. with us. We so appreciate you. For the rest of you, thanks for watching. I am Mark Galvin, the Director of Marketing here at Discover Dunwoody. This show is produced by Discover Dunwoody, and our producer is Madison Holtz. Our sound technician is Emily Inser Gibson. Be sure that you go to the library or to City Hall to get your Dunwoody sticker. We're giving these away. You just got to come by and get them. Uh, we also have them here. And you talk about Sproul. We also have them. Uh, we've given them the Sproul, and you can pick up some Dunwoody stickers over there. On behalf of the entire Discover Dunwoody team, thanks for watching. Be sure to catch us on social media. You can find us everywhere on using Discover Dunwoody or go to our website at discoverdunwoody.com. Until next time, enjoy the day and come Discover Dunwoody. <laughs>